A huge thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring today's video. Good timing since I need security at my new house to protect my hoopty fleet and I guess my family too. Anyway, a Simply Safe system is incredibly effective, reliable home security that's all monitored by professionals 24 7 who will call you in an emergency and send police help if needed. Unlike a lot of the competition though, it's really easy and intuitive to use with really thoughtful features like reminders that you left a door open thanks to small sensors that you don't even notice. Simply Safe also gives fair and honest prices with no contracts or hidden fees and is equipped for worst case scenarios like when you lose power, Wi-Fi, or someone takes a hammer to it. Since my new home is now going to house a lot of my hoopty fleet, I feel good having Simply Safe protecting me. Let's say a criminal or Tavares snuck into my home to try and steal another one of my cars. The monitoring center will notify police in the event of a break-in, and the camera will record what's going on. So support my generous sponsor, Simply Safe, and this channel by going to simplysafe.com/hoovies to learn more. A link to the website is in the description below. Recently, I found myself drooling over the new Land Cruiser Heritage Edition, a vehicle that charges a premium for some retro badges and the privilege of less options, like no third row seats, no running boards, but you get the cool badges, smaller diameter wheels, and uh, not much else. So I have mixed feelings about it, especially when you can buy an old Land Cruiser with Heritage built in, and they're super cheap, and there's really no downside to owning one, as I've proven over the last year of owning this 1999 Lexus LX 470. These things are really built to last forever. Now, my Land Cruiser didn't look nearly as beefy as this when I bought it for $2,100. Yeah, only $2,100 a year ago. It was actually in pretty rough shape. The interior was shredded. The front seats looked like a horrible aftermath of Taco Tuesday, and there was a suspicious rust hole in the back. I suspect for these reasons, this truck didn't sell at auction. I was the only bidder for several weeks at this wholesale auction. I was clicking on a computer hundreds of miles away, buying this thing sight unseen. After several weeks of trying, they sold it to me for only $2,100. I bought a mystery Land Cruiser, the cheapest one in the USA, and I had it shipped back home. And when it got here, unlike a lot of my purchases, I was really pleasantly surprised. It had zero mechanical issues, even though it had 350,000 miles on it and clearly was pretty neglected by the previous owner. 350,000 miles in the engine and transmission, according to the Carfax history report with a bunch of service records, is original along with the rest of the car. It last had a timing belt at 285,000 miles, so I was good to go from that standpoint on the only big maintenance item with these. So I really needed to do zero maintenance and zero repairs on this Lexus when it arrived. Amazing, but I still managed to spend triple what I paid for it to make it look cool. So I made a lot of upgrades to this Land Cruiser, this giant bumper, the rock sliders, a suspension lift, big tires, and of course the silly snorkel. And all these things made my Land Cruiser only slightly more capable off-road, but it made it look a lot more capable off-road, which is very important for the mall crawlers. Mall crawlers, the people who own off-road vehicles but never take them off-road, even though they modify them to look like they go mudding every weekend, but they they never do. It's silly. I didn't want to be roped in with those people, so I actually wanted to do stuff with this Land Cruiser, so I did. Cleaning up the interior and replacing the rusty hatch and putting on all these crazy bits had me about $10,000 into this Land Cruiser. And now that I had a significant investment into this thing, I decided the first test would be to take it in the water because for some reason I thought this snorkel made my Land Cruiser the chosen chariot of Aquaman and we went for a dunk. It was really, really stupid. Miraculously, this Land Cruiser survived my stupidity, but water did get inside the cabin, soaking the carpets and ruining the audio amplifier. That's all that really broke, thank goodness, but I learned the primary purpose of snorkels isn't really for water crossing. It's more to get fresh air from up higher. When you're off-roading, there's a lot of dust getting kicked up, especially if there's a vehicle in front of you, and the higher you are, the less dust is coming in. So I'm saving the air filter by putting the snorkel up here. The air's coming in there. I, I, I learned something. And now you learned something. You probably already knew that. 
My next adventure took me to Colorado for some actual real off-roading. I climbed a mountain to go up to a weather station that was over 13,000 feet in elevation. And afterwards, I camped out in this silly tent. I paid $1,300 for a rooftop tent uh, that I slept in for one night and one night only, and I never have ever again. I, I don't like camping, and the cost of that tent could have put me in a nice hotel for a week. So there you go. I'll probably end up taking this thing off, or I'll leave it on so when I go to the mall crawler convention, I can unfold the tent for a little extra attention. So while I put myself and this Land Cruiser in plenty of dramatic, stupid situations, this thing thrived. It survived. No problem. The only failure I had this entire ownership experience, other than a really stiff transfer case lever, which is common with old 4x4 vehicles, is the radiator cap. It started leaking and it was a $2 part. I put a new one on and it five seconds. It was no problem. That's the only failure I had in an entire year of owning this Land Cruiser and subjecting it to really, really harsh scenarios. And that's despite it having 350,000 miles and the previous owner clearly from the way it came to me didn't love on this thing that much. Now I could say this Land Cruiser is just special because it's so good, but really this is not the exception to the rule. This is normal for Land Cruisers and I'm going to explain why, but I'm going to do it inside because it's much warmer. Like I said, I can only take so much of the outdoors, especially during a polar vortex. What a word that is. But anyway, these Land Cruisers are built totally different from most other cars today that are engineered to be disposable, kind of like computer printers and iPhones. The, qu the quality of these are almost unheard of. Despite the high materials cost, Toyota makes the metal thicker in a lot of places like the stainless steel exhaust, which goes all the way through. That way it doesn't rust out. And the brake rotors are thicker as well, so they don't warp when the idiot owners decide to take their Land Cruisers swimming. Since Toyota is based out of Japan, an island with limited resources and only so much room for inventory, they had to do parts in a just-in-time kind of inventory, where they build just enough in small batches for the cars that are being built right at the moment. That's not normally how they do it in the United States. They'll want a part and they'll order a batch of it to last for months or years, and if there's any problems with it, they can't really change it because they've already had the supplier build the part and they've paid for it. So they, they don't tend to fix things if there's a defect. As far as Toyota's process goes, if there are problems, they can make changes really quickly and these lower batch productions usually yield much higher quality parts. As Toyota's become a giant company that has factories in tons of different countries, including the United States, they still use that just-in-time inventory system and explains why their cars are such high quality from top to bottom, from the $90,000 Land Cruiser to a Yaris or whatever the cheapest one is these days. Like, is it a Corolla? I don't know the new Toyotas that well. They're, they're just such good quality. So unlike a lot of used luxury SUVs that are heavily depreciated and cheap to buy, this one won't destroy your wallet in out of warranty repairs. My worst experience in a car ever was owning a 2003 BMW X5, and at the time it was only five years old. It was out of warranty, but it just totally killed me in repairs. And now that we're more than 10 years after I've owned that car, I barely see these early X5s on the road anymore. Meanwhile, I still see a lot of these Land Cruisers everywhere. It's no secret these things are engineered to last generations, and certainly this Land Cruiser has lived up to the hype. 354,000 miles. It's just, it's just amazing. My advice, buy one. Buy one immediately, but don't drill a hole in the fender and put a snorkel on, and don't put a roof tin on because that really screws up the MPGs and uh, I can't park it in the garage anymore. It's a bad idea. Thank you for watching.